What is up guys, Vern's here, back again with another Super Coach video. Uh, this time we are going to go through my final team reveal, uh, and I guess team structures uh, that I'm really fond of, and uh, there's probably like four I like that it's just very hard to choose from, um, but I think I've made up my mind on one of them. Uh, now before we do jump into the video, something I do want to go over with everyone, I was at the end of one of my first videos I did for MBL, so uh, I understand a lot of people probably didn't see that, is just the lead code to feel free to come and join me. Um, so that lead code will be 522558, and I will put that in the description below. So yeah, feel free to come join that, fill that up. I um, currently only got four others in there, so it'd be cool if we could get that filled. Um, now secondly, why this video wasn't out midnight last night, like I said it would be, um, Honestly, I went to go see my best mate and a six-month-year-old, and we ended up watching a movie, and by the time we got back, it was pretty late, and my missus did start work at seven, so unfortunately just ended up in going to bed uh, and chilling with her rather than uh, getting the video done. So, sorry, just didn't quite prioritize this. Uh, I knew I'd have the morning to be able to get up and get it done, though, and get it out straight away, so I'd like to just say sorry for that um, but I digress let's jump into the teams and the teams that I really like um, structure wise I guess just going in now with this these teams will be pretty similar when I do put them together because at the end of the day the players I like is still the same just how I do structure that and sometimes I move a few players in that I like um, instead sort of thing so we'll jump into it team one um, where are you I am just going to add them in as I go, but I have put them to the side here just on other browsers so I can see them. Um, so starting off uh, Team 1, we're just going to be... It's pretty similar to, I guess, the original team reveal at the end of the day. We're going to be throwing in Mitch Creek. Uh, he's got the double game Week 1, Week 2. He's going to be a great captain option, and assuming he still plays to that uh, almost MVP level, there's, he's just going to be a very solid pick, especially for the start of the season. Uh, next is Luke Travers. Uh, same thing, great early run for him. Uh, Melbourne play is definitely what we want to be on for the first five rounds. Um, but honestly, just looks super good, looked really impressive, and just scores in every way that you possibly can, super coach wise. So, uh, just very, very good in my opinion. And I, I feel underpriced um, at what I've seen him do. Uh, next, we'll jump into the bench. So I'm going to try and get through these pretty quickly because I do want to talk about the structures more than anything. Uh, we're going to put Alexander Saar in. Uh, obviously, just in my opinion, a big must-have. And then Kieran Galloway. Now, I think Galloway is really nice because he's a good pivot point to get down to Armstrong after round four. Round four, uh, Armstrong would have pay played three games at best where Galloway should have played seven. Um, now, I did get a video, sorry, a comment on the last video saying, you know, just run Armstrong as a loophole on the two weeks he's not there. Look, I guess you can definitely make up some points there, so it's not as detrimental, but I do think it's just better off transitioning to him later. So bringing in a player uh, that's going to earn money throughout those two weeks that he's not going to be earning, four extra games under your belt, should have hopefully, I mean, four extra games you're going to assume has probably earned more points, uh, even with you potentially maybe gaining a bit off a loophole, and then... Also, just the extra money you've earned, you transition down to Armstrong um, before round five starts, and then you make a little bit of extra money to help move the team around also. So I do like um, Galloway just because he has seven games by round four, and honestly was pretty good. So I, I was happy with what he did. Uh, next is, in my opinion, the biggest must-have of the season, which is Tyler Cook. He should be in every team, irregardless of the structure, and he will be in every single one of the teams I show, irregardless of the structure. doesn't matter how I move this team around. One thing that will be definite in all of them is Tyler Cook. Um, and then I do actually have Hook Porty on the bench, which is quite an expensive bench option, um, and I think that's what makes this... Uh, structure struggle a little bit because having his money on the bench just makes it really hard to, I guess, fill out the rest of the positions where it, whenever you run hook party on field, it just frees up so much money they go really expensive in sort of every other line. Um, but then we'll jump on down to the guards and guards. Uh, I've already mentioned this, but I mean, Della Vadova for one and Ian Clark. Now, Look, Delhi, as we mentioned, was really good in, obviously, his blitz games, and I think just super hard to look past. Um, 
honestly, he's just shooting with such confidence. He still scores through assists and steals, but increasing his like elevated scoring that he's putting out at the moment, it's just he just feels really good as a pick. Uh, and pretty cheap at that. Ian Clark, also pretty cheap as a pick, looked really good in all the preseason games before the Blitz. Blitz game one looked really good, but um, as we can see, a little injury symbol here, he did have uh, hammy tightness as to why he ended up not performing, uh, not playing the rest of game two and not playing game three. So if he gets up, it, it's a hard one because he's, he's just come off a bit of tightness. Um, and we obviously want everyone to be performing at their best. Saying that, I believe Trey Kell played for Melbourne last year, and he's moved out, so I think Ian Clark's going to really elevate his scoring um, to make up for that, I guess, other um, scoring guard that sort of left. It, it, he's moved on. It's left more room for these other players to put out better scoring as well. So I really think Ian Clark is a huge value pick. He's only priced at 19.5, and I would expect to see him honestly go. I would see about 25 average. So great run early. You're going to get him really cheap, which is really nice. Um, but he just, as I said, if he didn't have that little tweak and we saw him for the rest of these two games, I reckon he would have been really good and I reckon he would be in everyone's team. So it's really unfortunate that had happened to him. Um, and I want to find ways to fit him in, into all my teams because I really think he's great value. But at the same time, it's just it's so scary with that bit of an injury cloud there. Uh, and then jumping down, uh, Isaac White. I was just very big on him in these preseason games. He was very good in them, and it's very hard to look past him. And then Ben Henshaw, who was very good in the some of the Blitz games that he came on and played. Um, he played all three of them, and he looked pretty good even in the one that I think he only scored 11 in or so. But considering he's priced at 6, it is very easy to just like pick him up, uh, and he's going to make money e even with, I think, a more low-performing game. Uh, Isaac White don't doesn't have the round 1 game so it is a little bit so unlike the rest of the team um he still ends up with nine games between round two and round six though so he does have a five game run where he has nine uh, nine games so four double ups out of five rounds which is very nice after round one um and honestly i, I would like more brisbane players but i think maybe i'm faltering too much towards this round one uh, i'm sure you guys probably think i'm over complicating the fixture by jumping on the fixture a lot but I, I really think that fixture is going to be king in this format too many double up games teams get too far ahead I mean if you can end up with a forward I guess f1 in this case um, that's ended up with 37 games throughout the season because you've rotated them appropriately throughout the season rather than the 28 games that you know, if somebody just puts them M1 and leaves them there all season, you're going to obviously score significantly more. So we definitely want to try and take advantage of that fixture. Um, but that's team one. As I said, pretty similar to the, I'm pretty sure it's actually the same from the original video I made. And it's just, I think it is just a nice team at the end of the day. And it's hard to go past because I really did love what Ian Clark was doing. But the injury cloud just makes it a bit hard to start him. Uh, we'll jump into Team 2's structure. It's going to be, once again, pretty similar, but I think it may be just a bit easier to close it off, and I'll just quickly speed run through picking it up. Um, now, this one's going to be a lot more of a cheaper structure. That last one was, I sort of guess, Mitch Creek. Um, out, of, out of Bryce Cotton and Mitch Creek, we only had Mitch Creek. Um, this one's actually not going to have either of them. So it's going to be a much cheaper team. I think it's going to be a lot more um, value, in a sense. Um, so... Once you hit this mid game, I think like the middle of the season comes around. We're picking up a lot of players that I think have an elevated price tag, but are really good um, and can definitely perform above that. So Alex Tui, somebody that definitely looked really good in these first games, um, and honestly just really hard to look past. Somebody that I could definitely see averaging twenty while well priced at ten. So very nice from him. Uh, we're gonna grab Cook and we're gonna grab Hook Porty again. As I said, without getting these elevated price players of Mitch and Bryce, it really leaves the team a lot more room to just like put money elsewhere, which is obviously super nice in a sense. Uh, and then I actually threw Chris Smith in here because I did like what he was doing, and I did throw in Delhi. So um, then we also went for Ben Air on the bench. I think Ben Air is going to be a good pickup if you can find a way to get him into your side. And then I think Henshaw is too good to look past. So this is sort of structure too. We're looking without um, the big dogs, I guess, in the team. But because of that, we have extra money to be putting onto the bench, uh, which, you know, 
it is very nice to have the extra money there. And as I said, this is a team that I think you'll get into the middle of the season. These players are all really underpriced. I think when you bring in Mitch Creek or Bryce, they're not underpriced players. They're going to not really elevate too much in price. If anything, you may just lose money on them just because of their huge price tags. Um, so in that sense, it may make things... I think you'll have a banger early season starting them and getting enough points. It's going to be really important. But without them, I think we're sort of building a good mid-game here, mid-season. Uh, we picked players that are definitely going to increase in price. And then when we make the transition in the middle of the season, we're going to have a lot more cash to play with to make a better team overall. Uh, and then have a good middle of the season and then hopefully transition that into a good later season with all that extra money. And then just go hopefully steamrolling home. So that's sort of what this team's looking at. A bit more of a slower build-up um, for the top I guess to win overall it's a bit more slower but I, I do like it I, I gotta be honest I, I do like what I see here but I think maybe just a little bit more unreliable in captain options I do think honestly Cook is a great captain option if you're not running Mitch Creek on the games that South Melbourne honestly have double ups just run Cook I think Cook's gonna be sensational I think he's gonna be uh, between you know 34 36 average uh, so he's gonna be pretty close to one of the highest scoring players in the league, in my opinion. So you can definitely run him as a captain. Um, now jumping on to Team 3. Uh, I guess he has a... Sorry, I mentioned just real quickly in my previous ones, but uh, Tui's really good. Um, he, he definitely played above his price tag. He had two games, I think, over 24 in the Blitz, uh, and then one game at 9. So not too sure what happened with that 9. He is priced at 10, but I do think what we saw, he could definitely put out an average of 20. Ben Air priced at 9.5. I think he's definitely someone that can perform to that 15 to 17 average. So I think, once again, just good value at his price. Um, and once again, South Melbourne just have a really good run early. So definitely someone you want to jump on, I think. Um, so we're going to jump into team number three that I really like. Now, team number three... I mean, once again, very similar overall. Uh, it's, a, it's a very similar throughout the whole sort of thing. I guess that's sort of the motto here, as I mentioned. These are players that I did like overall, so I've run them just while sort of changing the structure. Um, Doolittle, that did come in for anyone that didn't see. I don't know much about Doolittle, so right now he's sort of just a pass for me. If he's actually a superstar and you have more information about that, feel free to definitely be bringing him in. But he is forward only, which does make it a bit hard. If you're going for Luke, uh, sorry, I think Luke Travers is just a good pick, um, especially his price tag. If you're going for Mitch Creek up here, once again, makes it very hard. Tyler Cook up here makes it very hard to fit in other just forward only options. Um, but once again, we're going to actually go for Sai and Tui just because the structure leaves us with a little bit more money. With us starting, obviously, Cook up here, we do allow us to grab Hook Porty. And then we get Ulrich here, who I think's is uh, Ulrich. He, he's really good, and honestly, even though Illawarra will play a few less games, he does feel like someone that could definitely average at that 20 mark. And considering he's priced at 6, it's just a, it's a huge cash grab. Um, I think he's someone you do need to hold a little bit longer because of Illawarra not playing a lot of games early, so he's going to have to be held for more weeks to really take full effect of the money he's going to earn, uh, which then obviously makes it a bit hard sometimes when you want to be transitioning to these Cairns players after round four. Uh, and then down here we will grab Bryce and once again Delhi because it's just it's very hard to look past Delhi. I mean, look, you could definitely look at playing somebody else instead of Delhi if you want. As I mentioned, Melbourne just have a really good run early. Uh, if you want to jump on someone like Chris Smith, feel free to do that. I definitely wouldn't be against that. Um... As I said, Goulding's not a pick I endorse, but then, yeah, I think Delhi's just sort of the next best one down the list. Um, and then we have quite a lot of excess cash here, so we can look at jumping onto Ben Air on this structure and going for Henshaw. So a lot of money left over here, but the good news is that leaves a lot of flexibility. Obviously, we're going to be looking at moving the team around a lot as we sort of go. Um, 
because as I mentioned, we wanna try and ride these double games where we can. So having a lot of cash sort of sitting there will make it a lot easier to be moving these players around um, to get to the players that you want. So I guess that's a big positive there. I think that you can run Bryce as captain in week one. You can run Tyler as captain in week two. Uh, Bryce is captain on week three, Tyler's captain in week four. So you can really yin yang those two uh, as to who you're actually running as the captain, um, which is really nice here. I think that's the really nice thing about having Bryce because you're always going to have Cook in the team. So having Cotton in the team as well, uh, I think it's just really nice to sort of yin yang that captain option. Um, and then we obviously only have two Melbourne, sorry, three Melbourne players here because once again, their runs are just very good to start. Uh, and then we fill up the bench with other players that more or less definitely played above their price tag, but also just have good runs. And then the final structure that I have sort of made up here, uh, I mean, you guessed it from the theme. This one's going to have Mitch Creek and Bryce in both of them. So you're going to have both of them in this team. Um, because of that, though, we're obviously using a lot more money, so we need to have a bit of a cheaper bench, which is unfortunate in that sense. Um, honestly, I really like Old Ridge. Like, the unfortunate thing here is if you look at getting Old Ridge, then you're skipping on Galloway, who just has a really nice run into transitioning to a Perth player. As I mentioned, he'll have seven games when, sorry, Cairns player, when they're coming back with three. Uh, Banan apparently may be getting up lower leg subject to fitness, so someone that, well, as I mentioned, I would be very hot on as well. So it gets very hard to fill in this slot right here. Um, when you're, like, it just gets really hard to fill in that slot in my opinion, because no matter what I think you need to pick Cook, um, yeah, oh, so sorry, now that I do look at the structure, actually it does make room for all of them, which is something I actually really like, because we get Hook Porty here and we get Oldridge, so yeah, we don't have Banan there, but works out really nice in that retrospect that we get all the centers that are really good value. And then once again, we're going to be going Bryce Cotton in to Delhi. And then we're going to finish this up a little bit cheaper on the bench. We're going to have to go for Harris here and then into Henshaw. So a lot, a few more Perth players there. But once again, another structure that I really like, you have the two big dogs in the competition. I think this is the sort of team, though, that it's like when you're making this team, you look in the win round one. Like, this is a team that could definitely win round one with uh, Bryce's elevated price, Creek's elevated price. Uh, I mean, they're going to be great yin yangs for the captains. As I mentioned, though, I think Cook's going to be a good alternative irregardless. Um, yes, we have a bit cheaper in Hook Porty as our center, but he was definitely really good in the games we saw, and he's going to be playing way above that price tag. So I don't think that's a negative. Um, yeah, once again, just a, a good team, I think, overall. And as a, one of the structures I'm really happy with and really contemplating, if I had to be honest. Um, so I guess those are the four structures we're looking at. I think, as I mentioned, this team, it's really good. Start of the season, really good um, week one. But it is one of those things that if things go poorly for Creek or Cotton, because you have both of them with those elevated price tags in your team, if they start losing money early, it's going to be really hard to move your team around. Yes, the rest of these players should make money. But if obviously these guys don't go well, it's just very punishing uh, in that sense. So I think this is a bit more high reward, high risk sort of thing. The two big dogs that could really boom you out of the gates. And as I said, you could win round one very easily with this team. But at the same time, you could, uh, if, the, if it goes poorly, it's going to put you pretty far behind the rest of the competition. That didn't get punished for having both of these players. Um, so they're the four structures I like. Um, we'll run over them again. I just have them, as I mentioned, in incognito uh, windows over here. Um, just so that they weren't messing each other up. So we'll start off with uh, Team 1 is sort of the Mitch Creek team. Uh, three Melbourne players, as I mentioned, we managed to squeeze Ian Clark in because of that, and honestly a structure I'm pretty happy with. Uh, you could e easily go Isaac White up to Ben Eyre. Um, yeah, look, White unfortunately didn't have as good as a blitz as we would have liked, but he is also at that cheaper price where he doesn't need to perform as high as Ben Eyre does to sort of make his money. Um, structure two is without any of the big dogs. So I think a team that, as I mentioned, if those two don't start off well, this team will definitely run away. Like it, it's going to make cash and it's going to really explode in that, in the middle of the season towards the end of the season. But if for some reason the big dogs don't fire early on in Bryce and Mitch, then all of a sudden you can really run away with a nice lead. Um, 
because you've gone for these players that are value instead. Uh, once again, still 58k left over, so plenty of wiggle room to play around with and move the team around. Um, the only thing I don't really like here is that we don't have Aldridge in the team, which kind of sucks, but I think Tui is a good, is also a really good option. I, I wouldn't mind going down the old ridge, but then it sort of just leaves like 100k sort of sitting here and don't really know what to do with that 100k. I mean, obviously, feel free to sort of make the teams yourself and move it around however you like it, guys. These are just what I'm contemplating. Um, team three is just with Bryce Cotton, and honestly, another team, this is a team I really love the look of. Um, it does have a lot of money sitting there in the bank, which isn't a bad thing at the end of the day. I think it's just a really nice team, though. As I mentioned, being able to use Bryce and Cook as your sort of yin-yang for your captain options, running the three Melbourne players, so super strong early. Um, I said the only thing here is moving to, like, Armstrong and stuff when they come in. Um, I think, yeah, moving to those Cairns players is going to be super important. Um, I mean, getting to Armstrong, I guess we can really, I guess, go down from Ben Air, uh, technically there. Uh, I, Tui can make a really easy switch to Clintman, so that's that's definitely an option there. Um, I think maybe I might be overthinking because I want to hold these players longer than what I need to in this sort of format, uh, the way the NBL is set up. And then the final one that we have here is... Oh, that is not the final one. final one that we have here is just running Mitch Creek and Bryce Cotton, which, once again, it's a very similar structure to the last one we saw. It's not running Tui, though. We sort of downgrade Tui to Galloway. Uh, and as I mentioned, that team already had 77k sitting there. So once you downgrade Tui to Galloway, it sort of banks an extra 50k in the pocket, leaves 120-ish k there, and then you can make an upgrade um, in this forward line from Travers to Mitch Quirk. So that's really the only thing that sort of changes there. Uh, you downgrade Harris as well. Sorry, Ben Air, the Harris puts another 30k there. And it allows you to get onto Mitch Creek, which is really nice in that sense. Um, but honestly, really hard to choose from. As I said, I definitely like, I do like this team a lot, but I think this team is my favorite and probably the one that I'm looking to go uh, with Bryce, Cook, Travis, Hookporty, and Della Vadova. Um, saying that I do like the teams that get Cook into the center line. I do like when he is in the center because um, he's definitely going to have a more elevated price. And I do think some of these forward options are definitely going to outscore Hookporty. But once you get Hookporty on your bench, who I think is almost a must start, He's just a lot of money on the bench, and it makes it really hard to, I guess, pick really good on-field options. And that's why we do have to look at these cheaper options, such as Ian Clark. At the same time, I think Ian Clark's really good, but because of that injury, you know, unfortunately, 32K, when we're looking to push him up, we're not really pushing him to anything I like, in my opinion. Um, it, it's just, I'm not happy with... Hey, unless you're going to 277, where you're looking at these imports, I, I don't really want to push him up. And we are already skimping across the bottom of the barrel everywhere. Uh, I mean, we could go down the Harris here, get a little bit of extra money, but it still doesn't get Clark to that 277 range, unfortunately. So with that bit of extra money that was sitting there, I'm definitely looking at White over um, Harris, personally. Um, and then I could definitely, you could also definitely look at Ben Air as well. That That's definitely one to toss up there between the two. Um, but yeah, they're sort of the four structures that I like, as I said. Um, I, I definitely think I am wavering much more towards this structure. Um, I think it's really good. Just going to cancel that. Uh, and then yeah, even this structure also works out really well. And I think the difference is getting Galloway on the field just getting that one extra game to transition him down. I really like that. And I do generally really like Harris as a player as well. So, um, yeah, look, tell me what you think. Tell me what structures you like. I mean, obviously, I showed them in order. We had, I guess, one. Uh, I'll, oh, sorry, just go over them again. So we have structure one. We have structure two. We have structure three. We have structure four. Comments down below which structure you like the most. Um, as I said, feel free to grab these structures and then maybe move around a few players you don't want. Maybe move Tui out, get a bit of extra money to move elsewhere with it. Um, play around with them all you want. But there's the, they're the teams that I personally am really um, fond of myself. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely the act, uh, where I'm going to be going. Um, but yeah, once again, for any of those that did tune around to the end of the video, I, I do really appreciate those that do. For those that have subscribed, awesome definitely appreciate that uh, and make sure you come join that league i mean if that league gets filled really quickly i might even do a quick um 30 second video where i release another league code uh before 
the season starts, but I'd love to see that league get filled in because at the end of the day, I'm not playing this with like anyone else. This is really just me doing it. I've done my own research. I don't have anyone else talking about it that I know. So as you saw, I have the public league that I joined and then I have the super coach league that I've made for YouTube. So I would love to, if more people are interested, try and get a second league out there for YouTube um, because I just want to be a part of that community and have you guys be a part of, uh, I guess, my, my journey too. So yeah, really appreciate that guys. Uh, I'm going to stop rambling on here, get to the end. I appreciate y'all for sticking around. Peace. Later.